Today, we're tackling something every developer dreams about, setting up and configuring your very own self-hosted GitLab instance. That's right, no cloud restrictions, complete control, and all the customization you need to run your projects your way. Sounds exciting, right? Let's get into it. Let's quickly answer the big question. Why should you self-host GitLab? Well, here are the top reasons. Complete control. You own your data and can decide exactly how it's managed and stored. Cost efficiency. Say goodbye to subscription fees and you can choose where you want to host it. Customizability. From custom runners to integrations, you can tailor GitLab to suit your exact needs. Privacy. Your data stays where you want it to stay. Perfect for teams handling sensitive or proprietary projects. Convinced? Awesome. Now let me give you a quick overview of the steps we'll cover. To set up your self-hosted GitLab, here are the steps you'll need to follow. Prepare your environment, set up a server, install dependencies, and ensure you have a domain name. Install GitLab, download and install GitLab's Omnibus package, or use Docker for containerized deployment. In this video, we will use the first method. Configure GitLab, customize key settings like domain, SSL certificates, and runners. Test your setup. Make sure GitLab is accessible and running smoothly. Advanced configuration. Set up CICD pipelines, backups, and user permissions. I'll walk you through the highlights of each step, but the in-depth tutorial will focus on configuring GitLab for real-world use cases. Let's jump in. First things first, let's talk about the server. GitLab is resource intensive, so you'll need a beefy server if you're planning to host it for a team. Here's the recommended minimum, four CPU cores, eight gigabytes of RAM, 100 gigabytes of disk space, or more, depending on your project size. Make sure your server's operating system is up to date. GitLab supports most major Linux distributions like Ubuntu, Debian, and CentOS. For this demonstration, I'm using an Azure virtual machine the B4 MS1 with four CPU cores and 16 gigabytes of RAM and with the Ubuntu 24 operating system. You don't need to use the same setup, but it's good to know if you want to follow exactly. Let's visit the official GitLab documentation. Look for the Ubuntu instructions and start copying the commands, then paste it on your server. Get the next command to install Postfix for email notifications. Now we'll add the GitLab package repository. But by default, the command is for the Enterprise Edition. We want to install the Community Edition, so make sure to replace the first letter E with a C from Community. Finally, this command will install GitLab. Make sure to replace Enterprise Edition with Community Edition and update the external URL with the domain that you have connected to the server. If you don't have a domain, don't worry, you can use the IP address. However, please note that you won't be able to generate a certificate without a domain. I recommend obtaining a domain now, as it will make following the process easier for you. I will speed up the process, but this will usually take a few minutes to complete, so don't worry and go grab a coffee while this is running. Okay, great. Now that it's finished, let's check if everything went okay. To go to the external URL we provided earlier. And it redirects us to the sign-in page, which means that the installation was successful. A temporary password for the root user, available for 24 hours, was generated in etc.gitlab initial underscore root password. We can retrieve it from there and use it for the very first sign-in. Now, what I like to do is to go to the admin area and create another user. Give it administrator level access. Now, set up a password. Git will ask us to change it later after we will log in with this user, but that's fine. Let's log out and log in again with the new user and set again a new password. Great, now we should get rid of the default root user for security purposes. I will just block it. In case I need it later, I can quickly unblock it. Now let's take care of another security matter. 
Right now, anyone can sign up for our GitLab instance and create an account. We don't want this to happen, so we will disable this feature. If we want to add users, we will just do it manually, like we did with this new administrator user. The sign up page is not working anymore, which is good. Now let's create our first project. I'll use a Laravel template, but you can choose any other type you like or upload your own project. But first, let's create a group so we can set the permissions, configure runners, and manage other settings more easily later. Now back to the project, give it a name and make sure it's in the group we just created. The next step is to run a pipeline. For that, we will need a GitLab runner. Go to the admin area CICD and click on Runners. Click on the three dots next to the new instance runner and select Show Runner Installation and Registration Instructions. Don't worry about the warning on the registration token that the support is deprecated, it is still working fine like that. There will be a separate video dedicated to runners where I'll show you how to use an authentication token, but it's fine for now. Now let's copy the commands for downloading and installing the runner binary and paste them to the server. Next, let's get the command to register the runner. We select Docker as the executor, and for the default Docker image, we'll just leave the example 1, Ruby 2.7, as this won't matter because we will define a specific image for all our pipeline stages. Now the runner is registered successfully. Let's check the configuration in etc. GitLab runner config Tom L. Most of the runner configuration can be adjusted from here, like how many concurrent jobs to run, the check interval, and much more. Back to the GitLab instance, refresh the page and see the new runner is online. If you notice during installation, I've added a tag runner1. You can click on edit and add other tags. But for now, I will select the checkbox for run untagged jobs and save the changes. Now back to the first project and let's try to run the pipeline. As you see, this job is failing, and this is because I forgot to install the Docker engine on the server. Let's do it quickly. Go on the Docker website to get the commands for the installation. I will speed up the process, but if you have any issues here, you can check my video about Docker or leave a comment below. Let's retry the job. As you can see, now it's working fine after the Docker engine installation. And that's all for this video. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please leave a comment down below and don't forget to check out my other videos.